Oh, hi. This week, I forgot to do an intro, and I only realized as I was eating breakfast and loading the files into my editing program. So, this is this is future me saying hello, and that this studio vlog contains me prepping for my own market, doing a wedding dress overhaul. No stress at all about that. Uh, it's still hanging up there. I have not um, set up a pickup time for the bride, but their wedding is in less than 10 days, so eh, it's fine. <laughs> I'm proud of how it came together. It was a lot of hours, but I will uh, I will show you that towards the end. There was a extremely bummer day last week that I briefly mentioned. I don't stay on that particular topic too long. Just some other bits and bobs. That is the trouble with filming little bits over the course of a week or two is that I don't remember exactly everything until I'm rewatching stuff. And things like this happen where I forget to film uh, an intro. So let's go back in time to last week and see how it all began. Okay, I got a box. I don't know what's in here, but it's from my fairy god Cheryl, so probably something fun. I mean, not that I'm surprised that it's more fabric, but it's more fabric. These are all like hand stitched. What? I've never seen fabric like this before. It looks like we got some batiks, baby. Oh man. Oh, these are gonna be really good for some of the bags I'm about to start on for my next batch. I still don't understand how these are made, but I like them. <laughs> Looks like some fat quarters, perhaps. Pretty. Oh, these are also gonna be really good. Heck yeah. It is out of necessity, but it's also kind of the fun of it, like keeps it novel is, even if I'm making a sling bag or whatever bag out of the same outer fabric and vinyl combo, the linings, just because I'm, using little stash pieces are gonna end up being different and I think that's so fun. Not in a like you gotta catch them all kind of way but like you're always gonna have a unique piece for me which I think is neat. Oh wow! Look at all these! Are these like... oh oh wow this is yard cuts, I think. Thank you so much. I'm going to use all of this. You know me very well, so thank you, Cheryl. <laughs> this clip you're currently seeing is in the middle of my wedding dress alteration session, so like perhaps the most stressful part of the whole thing. I took everything apart already, so the zipper's been taken out and the buttons at the top have been taken out, and I talked over some design options with the bride and um, we agreed on a, a plan of attack and I'm just working on making that happen. We're like, I know I can do it, but it's, it's a wedding dress, so of course it feels more stressful. <laughs> not that they, actually, now that I'm saying this out loud, it's not even my first wedding dress alteration and I've done this exact type of alteration on formal wear more than once, so. I wouldn't have taken it on if I didn't think I could do it, but it's just gonna take a lot of finesse and that's okay. It's one of those things like I'll have to end up charging more, but it's wedding dress alteration. So I think that's, that's pretty standard. She doesn't seem faced by that. And likewise last week, I, I should have filmed some of the stuff I did last week cause it was like a pretty, a pretty busy and like interesting week, I think. But I had a bridesmaid's dress alteration to do and it was just hemming it. And I, and I wish I'd taken pictures or something to show you what the hem looked like because the way the lining was attached was in the most annoying possible way. I would have rather had a full outer and lining circle skirt to hem than deal with what I had to deal with. <laughs> it was also just a really frustrating fabric to work with. So like, <sighs> and then I had a custom Hell's Moving Castle cardigan to make. I did the farmer's market. I oh worked the tap room. I also went to a concert. It was my first time in Boston, like Boston proper, since like March of 2019. I took the T, like the the train, the subway that runs in Boston for the first time in four and a half years, and it was um, 
totally fine on the ride out and most of the ride back, and then some weird guy pulled some weird shit, and uh, I was very upset about it afterwards, but I'm safe, I'm fine. Proud of myself, because I did, like, get up and move away, where I am a freeze panic response person versus, like, a fight or flight. I, like, shut down. I was mostly mad. I was mad more than anything else, so. <sighs> Just existing as a person in the world is super fun. I'm gonna wash my hands just because this box doesn't look too dirty, but this is a white wedding dress I'm working on and I don't want to risk fucking it up. So I'm currently doing a bunch of very teeny tiny hand stitching so I can turn these strips into this. I just want the two edges like flush against each other and even, right? so that when I attach these to the dress, it's just gonna make that part easier. I'm just doing these by hand first and then. I also don't need a bit, like it weighs a lot because wedding dresses weigh a lot and having it like sitting on me. I've been putting most of the skirt into the plastic bag that it came in and just having the top hanging so that way things aren't getting dirty, the dress isn't getting any more wear or anything, but having a heavy plastic bag sitting on my lap is not my favorite. So I might find something to like make a layer between the two. It's gonna take a long time, but it's it's gonna be doable. So anyways, I am procrastinating. Back to whatever else I might have been doing. Hi gang, it's Tuesday the 26th of September and um, Bert's fine, he's totally fine. The other dog I live with, um, you've probably heard him barking here and there, or like maybe heard his footsteps in the background. Um, he passed in his sleep last night. I thought I thought for sure my partner was like misspeaking or I was misinterpreting what he was saying and just like not hearing it right, and then. That was at like four or five in the morning and I went back to sleep and I thought for sure it was just like one of my anxiety dreams because uh, they're usually really realistic stuff like that. Um, something like that happening and then I'll wake up and be like, oh, um, but that is not the case. It fucking sucks, but at least I got this little guy. I do not want stinky kisses, but thank you for snuggling. He's actually hanging out in my office today. Normally he gets wigged out when I'm crying. Uh, I think like my erratic breathing when I'm like going through it freaks him out. He's, he's really spooked by like if something blows on him, he gets really upset about it. So I just don't think he appreciates the sensation of that happening. So he usually doesn't like snuggle me when something's going on but if I'm sick in any other way he's usually pretty down to snuggle but he's he's been around me more today than he has been in a in a long while so I don't know if he knows something's up okay I just went on a ramble about like not knowing the logistics of a pet passing at home and we don't need to get into it I will check in when I have something less soul crushing to talk about I hope you're all having a great day and please give all of your pets extra pets for me. Yeah. Hello, just a quick Wednesday check-in. I don't think I showed you how I overhauled the entire studio. Right now is not the time for it, but I did move my industrial into a different corner where if you turn here, this used to be blocked by a stack of Sterlite containers, and then this is usually where I'm sitting. I'm currently editing the studio vlog that's going out today. Not going out today, going out this week. I'm done moving the camera. I just like this flow better, so excited. And it's better lit. I don't even have my studio lights on. These are just like my my soft lights, my filming lights. These are just the overhead lights. And it's, I, I, I don't feel like I need it. And you can, you can see all of what I'm doing. It's great. And I have my original workstation back, but I do have a pile of bags because I'm running a sale in my Etsy shop, but my fairy godchild got one of my very favorite totes, and then my favorite of the floral totes, and then who doesn't want a Doctor Who bag? And then this, I didn't realize this was a Tula Pink bag. Like, 
I made it, but it's tulip pink fabric. So super cool to find that out. So thank you for the person that mentioned it. I have some tulip pink fabric that I've been very excited about and I, I had no idea that was hers. And then I got more prep done on the wedding dress and I made all of these tabs. There's like 50 of them if not more, but I did have breakfast with my mom this morning. It was lovely. And then we did like a really quick thrifting trip and she got me a sweater that I'm very excited about. I need to wash it first, but I'll do laundry tomorrow and I'm about to go do the last farmer's market of the season. So doing okay today. Upcoming week is going to be the hardest part, you know, just like the first time doing certain things without him being around. So I can hear Bert jinkling in the other room. So I'm going to go take him out before I have to go. And yeah, I think that's it. Just been editing all morning and hanging out with my mama and uh, trying to take a little bit of time for myself because it's, it's been a rough one. So I, I will probably check in sometime tomorrow. Have a great night. As, as if this isn't jumping to the next clip right now. All right, hi, good morning. I am about to head out to the Halloween market that I put together at the brewery and I'm really excited about it. I worked a long shift yesterday doing a brew fest at the apple orchard where this thing called haunted overload happens. I guess it's like one of the most critically acclaimed haunted houses in the country or whatever. And uh, listen, New Englanders love their spooky shit. But I printed out little flyers for the market today because like folks out that way, it's like almost an hour drive to get there from here. I figure Rockingham is not their local brewery, so hopefully it gets some folks to come out. If nothing else, it has the address at the bottom. Like part of my job is getting people to come to the brewery. And I thought, yes, we had stickers that people could take, but having the flyer is like one more thing to have in people's pockets the next morning when they're like recuperating from the brew fest. And they're like, oh yeah, this place. I forgot about this place. And like, maybe they'll remember the conversation me and the other person I was working with had. Little, little things like that tend to help. Just that little personal touch. Yeah, I'm I'm really excited. I'm trying not to be too stressed out. I just gotta go do my hair. I have a couple minutes for that. I just downed a breakfast sandwich. I have a couple snacks in the fridge that I can take, like pretzels and chocolate hummus, and then these little tiny like bagel chips, and then some cream cheese to dip it in. I'm excited about that. And then I feel like I have something else. Oh, I have like a mini thing of Pringles. So just little snacks I can pick away at throughout the event. I, I tend to bring my own food. There is a food truck there today though and I'm excited about it so we'll see. They make a mean lobster grilled cheese so I I might end up getting that. Although it's, it's supposed to be hotter today so I don't know how into hot food I'm gonna be. But anyways, I got some orange juice that I can down to keep my immune system up. I haven't gotten any further on the dress just because I had my entire day Friday was running errands and doing chores so like I didn't get off my feet for like 10 plus hours straight. It was a very hectic day and Fridays turn into my errand days for whatever reason and I got my video edited and posted for this most recent studio vlog. I eventually got there and then I feel like there was something else I was going to update about but I don't remember. Oh I got another Etsy order because someone watch the video I posted on Friday and then they ordered it. So hello, thank you for your order. I appreciate the little note you left and um, thank you for hanging out for so long. They got the last of the twall bags and the last of the like haunted Alice in Wonderland Tula Pink fabric bag. I'm gonna toss in a little extra something, maybe a Burt pin or a Burt keychain or something like that. Cause they said they've been watching since my Dr. Frankenfurter stuff and that was so long ago. It did give me an idea for like casual cosplay Frankenfurter dress I want to make because I have so much of that fabric left and I haven't used it since and it's the perfect color for an outfit for him. Though I have some knitwear that is also a good color scheme for that. So we'll we'll see. I gotta figure out how I'm feeling. Yeah, I have like a seafoam green knit fabric I can use and it could make like pink color block like ends of the sleeves. I think it'd be cute. All right, off I go do my hair, which there's not a lot of it. So thankfully it does not take very long. I did trim and like touch up my nails cause my, my thumbnails like crack along the side. I have recently become aware that that is not normal. The like shredding that happens on my nails. I know that the paint, the paint, na nail polish is like not looking so fancy fresh, but like 
don't know if you can tell, but like the layers of my nails shred and it's uncomfortable a lot of the time, which is why I've been painting my nails to like reinforce them a little bit and it's helping. I, I used to have a really bad split that would happen like in the center of my thumbnail, like on the front end here. So like at least along the side is a little less painful for some reason, but still annoying. And that is another signifier of the uh, connective tissue disorder that I apparently have. And I, t I do, I take supplements and it doesn't do fuck all for me. Or maybe I'd be worse off without it. I also thought like it would help my hair be less thin and awful, but it hasn't done that yet. And I've been taking them for years. So um, yeah, kind of a bummer, but you know, everybody's body is built different. Add some liquid IV, do my hair, took Bird out, just fed him, snuggled him for a little bit and we slept in this morning. It was glorious. And then, yeah, off to the races. Hopefully the market goes well. I'll try to take pictures with my phone. It's a lot to set up. I'm running the market as well as vending at it. So it's a little bit more overwhelming than some other events. It'll be good. All right, I'm procrastinating. Off I go. Oh, okay, hello. It is Monday, the 2nd of October. Oh. I am actively trying to take it easy where I know I still have a wedding dress alteration to do. I haven't worked on it in a couple days, but like I need to be in a good clear headspace to be working on that. The market yesterday went okay. It wasn't as busy as we were hoping. Like every market could be busier in most cases, but there were people there 20 to 30 minutes before the event actually started because they just wanted to get there before there was a rush. I don't know, that, that made me feel really good and they had mentioned where they heard about the event and stuff and there were some people that hadn't been to the brewery in years that came out and there were other folks that hadn't been before at all and then a bunch of regulars and stuff and I had some really sweet conversations with some folks. I myself sold three keychain bags, a wristlet bag that I've also been giving away a free wrist strap if someone buys a wristlet just because they're sitting around anyway and I didn't I didn't know how else to like promote them and I have sold out of a couple designs of my wristlet pouches, one of which I'm packing up today. And actually these are the last two of both these designs. So the last of the twall bag, this is what I meant by twall is I, I call it French curtain fabric, but <laughs> I really like this. And then this is the haunted Alice pattern. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna add a wrist strap with this. That's, that's an extra thing I'll add. And then I, yeah, I think, I think maybe like a Burt pin. Hello, speaking of Burt, this little gremlin got really mad at me cause I was working all day Saturday, all day yesterday. My partner was around to hang out with him. So it's not like he didn't get hangouts. You got some boy time and that was apparently not enough. Also, someone dropped off some pants for me to hem. That was good. And then a couple other folks were just like asking what the deal is with the alteration nights. If I haven't already, I will give you a little peek around at how I updated the shop because I think I've mentioned that I did it and been like, I'll have to give you a tour when I have a minute and then I keep not doing it. So I will do that, hopefully showing it now, actually, that would be a good a good editing choice on my part if I were to do such a thing. <laughs> I have to empty the car from the event yesterday because I not only had my own stuff to set up but I also brought two pop-up tents so we just had like three in a row and everyone was underneath because the patio at the brewery is like not the biggest space. I think it was perfect for the number of people that we had. Um, we almost had a seventh and I'm glad someone was able to bail because I think had we had one more person, it would have been way too much. Oh, the other artists that were there yesterday were Falling Leaf Felting, which is my lovely friend, Jamie, who does needle felting stuff. And she also has like some really cool wire tree sculptures. And then she has some pottery stuff. And then Humble Dragon Dice. He has genuinely some of the coolest dice I've ever, ever seen, where he makes his own like aged dragon skulls and then sets them in like a bed of moss and then also adds some other like flecks and stuff into the resin that's otherwise clear so that when the dice come out, there's a dragon skull in it and it looks like it's in an abandoned cemetery or something. It actually reminded me of 
a location in the D&D campaign I've been playing with some friends. He has full sets of that and other just like gorgeous dice. But then he has like jumbo D20s that have jumbo dragon skulls inside of it. And then he has these little pumpkin dragons that are in cages and I love them so much. What's cool about his stuff is there's a story to so much of it and so few people do that, you know? Other than jackalopes just being very cool. I at least know, and, and some of y'all know, a little bit more of the backstory of my love of jackalopes, where like, if if you're new here, this is my arm tattoo. I asked for a Beatrix Potter style jackalope, and I love it. I have a specific deep tie to them, and I don't know if that particularly comes across with like the lino block printing I've done and the jewelry that I make that has jackalopes on it, or is is jackalope shaped but other than like I like Hal's moving castle so I learned how to make quilted checkerboard panels so I can make pink and blue argyle sections so that things look like Hal Pendragon's jacket you know other than just liking a piece of media I don't know if there's more backstory to that but yeah I don't know and then there is Reese and May who makes uh, these super pretty and like just so well executed uh, tassels with beads and stuff. She's also a Halloween girly, so definitely has some very cool designs on her site right now. And then we had Bungalow Bakes. He's a local baker. Yeah, this bakery had snickerdoodle blondies and they were safe to eat, but like on the underbaked side. And I like underbaked cookies and I like brownies but I'm not a huge chocolate person and I forget blondies are an option and it never in a million years would have occurred to me to do a snickerdoodle blondie and she also had molasses cookies and I just <sighs> she gets me oh I I was <laughs> I was the other vendor I was like there were six spots and all of them were filled who am I forgetting me I'm forgetting me cool <laughs> so have I mentioned it's been a long stretch of time. I kind of want to listen to an audiobook today. May maybe I'll go to the library? I feel like I'm just giving myself an errand doing that, but I don't know. I have some projects I'd like to film this week where I'd, I'd like to kind of bank a few ahead because uh, I'm either going to have next Friday off from doing a video or the Friday after. I'm, I'm undecided which one I want to do. Yeah, well I guess I guess I'm deciding now. I will have a video next Friday and we'll probably take the following Friday off. I think I think that's good math. I think that'll work out. Yeah, because I'll have this up this Friday. It's hard when you're actively filming things but it's not going up like that day or a couple days ahead and you gotta think in future weeks. I have a hard time wrapping my head around that so Thank you for bearing with me for that. I do need to list my sling bags on Etsy. I keep saying I'm going to. And I was like, oh, after this event, I'll do it. After this event, I'll do it. But I don't have another market until the end of October. It's literally the Saturday before Halloween. I would like to make more in the meantime, but also list the ones that I already have because they're such good fabric. I found such good fabrics and I love the design choices I made to piece it all together. And a comment I got from my friend Jamie that genuinely meant a lot and I, I do feel the same about it. She was just noting, even from a year ago, that my stuff just looks of higher quality. Like it looks more professional and more like looks. That means a lot even from a year ago because I know a year ago I, I hadn't done markets in a long stretch of time and first getting back into it after a stint of not doing it and like having to put yourself out there. I know the stuff I was making was nicer than before COVID. Seeing the growth, like having marked progress, like it's really nice to take a minute and recognize those things. So yeah, it was, it was really good. And I appreciate that she told me that. I've gotten a lot of comments just like on the workmanship recently. And that almost means more than someone actually purchasing it. I've been working really hard at it and it, it's cool having other people notice it that much because it also makes me notice it more and I, yeah, really, really appreciate the time to reflect. So 
a little bit of admin today, a little bit of just like tidying, cleanup, resetting. I think will do my brain a lot of good and then hopefully I will be in a clear enough headspace to finish up this dress. And I, yeah, I do have a pair of pants to hem for someone, but they're picking that up on Thursday. So I, I, I am not in a rush to do that. It should probably go quickly. And then I've had a couple people tell me that they're going to show up to my alterations night on Thursday. So something to look forward to, but yeah, I think just putting on, I guess, I guess I could probably use my library's online stuff and just download an audiobook instead of going to the library because my laptop doesn't have a CD player and I don't have to do CDs. I can listen with my headphones on my on my laptop or my phone because we've had some technological advances in the past couple years. <laughs> and I will say the reason I get to take a little bit of an easier time and kind of like let myself mentally and physically reset things is because of the support over on Patreon. If not for y'all, I wouldn't have the time to take a day off to deal with the loss of a pet, to put in the hours to prep for these kinds of events. I did a mock-up. I don't think I mentioned that at all. I did a mock-up for my outdoor setup and I'm so thankful I did. It, it is time consuming, but the time it saved me the morning of the event and just getting to workshop how it looked. I'm so happy with the setup I ended up coming up with for my table for outdoor events because I realized doing my outdoor events in the spring that my indoor table setup is really tall and it just does not work for a tent set. It's too tall. You can't see unless you're in the tent. And also I didn't have my table at the front of my tent where I think people having to come in the tent, I, I'm i sure I do the same thing where you shy away because you feel like you're committing too much going into a tent. But I think, I think what I'm gonna do going forward is have my six foot table across at the front and then along the side have my like tree garment rack with the prongs and then have my like clothing garment rack along the other side. So like I have a bunch of room inside of that and that way everything's towards the front no one has to come in if they don't want to and then I'll still have room to like sit what a concept though I I'm still on the hunt for like a director's chair folding chair like a camp chair but tall all right I'm gonna do some vacuuming gonna make a big breakfast you probably hear my stomach growling I know the studio vlogs by their nature tend to be all over the place because just my work is all over the place. I juggle a lot of types of things, but I feel like this was particularly disjointed. So I appreciate you hanging out. Y'all seem to really like the studio vlogs and I love sharing it. I am itching to do a couple projects and I'm trying to decide if I want to change how I approach them going forward, where I like watching other people do kind of chatty, rambly, project videos that feels like a little sewing diary and that's been my approach but I don't know if like more straightforward tutorials would be helpful. They'd also just end up being shorter because I wouldn't be doing this the whole time and just derailing myself so I don't know if you have any thoughts on that or if I should just include the project I'm working on as part of a studio vlog. I don't know so um yeah. I know it's been a minute since I've actually shared how I go about making some of the stuff I'm making and I do really want to share the sling bags because it's not my pattern. It's from a company called Swoon Patterns and I'm just obsessed with making them. I cannot wait to make more. Oh, I know I said I was gonna go, but the other thing I keep forgetting to show you is the fabric haul I did last Monday? Two Mondays ago? It's been, it's been a long couple weeks. <laughs> Okay, so I got some like, I don't know, brushed silver vinyl. I got two yards of that. I have 10 yards of this black vinyl, which yeah, this is the stuff I was able to buy and, and reinvest after GraniteCon because that went so well. I was able to stock up on some things that I've been needing for a while, including this other entire bolt <laughs> of fusible fleece that I got, which was half off, but I also got to use coupons. So I did get this at Joann's. A supply shop like Wawak or Wawak, W-A-W-A-K. It's cheaper, like at the straight price, but because yeah, everything 
was half off for interfacing at Joann's. It was equal amount, but I didn't have to deal with like, oh, I need to purchase so much of this to get free shipping. Like I was already at the store to do an online pickup order and I will show you what that included. So I got more of that like oil slick metallic foil print that I really liked. I figured, hey, maybe make more of the bags that you already sold out of before you've even put these in your shop. Probably a good direction to go. And also I just love these two fabrics, but the glow in the dark skull fabric. Cool. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> I love it so much. Yeah, so there were like three yards of this left at the store, so I got all three. Then there was a remnant, so I got that while I was there. And then, speaking of buying all that was left, this is not even available on the Joann's website. It's just whatever store still has a little bit in stock is where you have to acquire it. But I did get four yards of the metallic rainbow cat fleece, and I'm obsessed with it. So I'm very much looking forward to making more clothes for and keeping some for myself. I I was more sad than I have been with some other garments to see the pullover I made with this cell. Bert is trying to dig into his into his bed. Buddy, you're okay. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I saw myself wearing it. Not that I don't see myself wearing some of the other stuff, but it was hard to let this go. It's just such exciting fabric and I and I want to wear it. So I will be making one for myself and keeping it. God damn it. So yeah, but there's there's plenty here to make a bunch of things of all sizes. There is someone that had asked if I could make her a custom one of whatever size. I I think the one I had made was like just too small for her. And she's like, "Is there a way if you got more of this fabric to like size it up?" I was like, absolutely even, even if it was a bigger size discrepancy like I've done it before and I'll do it again yeah hopefully I will see her at another event or I think she said she follows me on Instagram so it was like next time you post about the rainbow cat fabric I, I will be getting in touch so once I have time to to actually like take on that custom order I will I will do such things but I need to focus on that on that wedding dress. Before I go on a 40 minute ramble about something else unrelated, um, I'm, I'm gonna go and get started on my list for the day. I did all, already get started on my list, but continue, continue along it. Mostly I'm just avoiding emptying the car at the moment because I really don't want to, but it's only gonna get hotter as the day goes on and it's gonna be like mid 80s tomorrow somehow. So the sooner the better for a number of reasons. Anyways, I will see you back here with another video next Friday. Thank you so much for hanging out. Not dis disrepair? Is that the word? Well, it's taken apart. Its guts are out. My fairy god Cheryl ordered. Ordered? My, my brain actively broke while I was trying to figure out how to do stoichiometry, and I can die happy if I never have to think about that word ever again. Oh, little sneezy. He's just got little sneezes because he's a little guy.